towering above London Bridge Station, it's the tallest building in Western Europe. We're going up the Shard. The Shard itself might be hard to miss, soaring 300 metres into the sky, but the public entrance is trickier to find, tucked away in a tunnel beneath London Bridge Station. Hey. Up to level 68. Okay, great. It doesn't take very long. 30 seconds? Yeah, 20. 20, right. Fast. So we're heading up from um, transfer level 33 to the first viewing gallery on floor 68. And we're going up a whole different series of things from three levels of restaurants to uh, the five-star Shangri-La Hotel, which includes a swimming pool on level 52. There's a series of 10 apartments, which allegedly set you back between 30 and 50 million pounds. So we're here at level 68, which is the cloudscape. Um, Essentially, they've put kind of baffles in the windows to stop crowds from accumulating here to begin with and creating a kind of bottleneck. So you're asked to, to come to your left and go up to the first viewing gallery floor. It's all lined in the same um, Brazilian hardwood and this kind of um, warm red glazing, which to me has a sense of a bit like a kind of hotel lobby, like you're going into a slightly corporate environment, very different to what you would expect from a tourist attraction. Um, even the uniforms the, the guest ambassadors are wearing you know, look like the kind of thing you would find in a hotel. It's a slightly strange atmosphere. So we're here at level 69, which is the first public viewing gallery, a three-storey high uh, atrium, essentially, with a 360-degree view across the whole city. I mean, we're so high that, you know, railways look like model train sets. There are 12 of these digital telescopes, or telescopes as they're called, because they tell you stories about what you're looking at. So you can zoom in at any landmark in the city. For example, St. Paul's Cathedral. Press the button, and lo and behold, you're given information about it. What else have we got? Church of Scientology. And there's an extra added feature, given how unreliable London's weather is. There's a pre-recorded setting for day, sunset, and nighttime views. And to me, having this kind of crosshair almost feels a bit like a com computer game. Like you can select your most hated landmark and press the missile <laughs> button. So we're here in the triple height glazed space of the 69th floor viewing gallery, about to head up to the 72nd floor, which is a partially open observation deck. Now, at about 244 metres, it's the highest observation deck in Western Europe. But incredibly, there's over 40 other viewing platforms around the world that are taller, from the Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which is the tallest building in the world, to the Tokyo Skytree and the CN Tower in Toronto. So we're here on the 72nd floor open viewing deck, where these famed shards of glass start slipping and sliding past each other like the top of a broken beer bottle. And it's amazing actually being able to look up beyond where you're standing. It kind of gives an extra sense of, of vertigo, seeing the building beyond the level where, where you are. There's a real difference being up on this open 72nd floor compared to the sealed area below, which to me felt a bit like an enclosed airless corporate lobby. I mean, here you can feel the wind in your hair. You can hear the sounds of London. It's a completely open experience and, and quite exhilarating. The viewing gallery may be one thing, but to my mind, the best kept secret of the Shard is through here. The Louvre, with the best view in London. It's very easy to criticize the Shard as a totem pole of wealthy elites and a, a kind of monument to Qatari investment. And of course, it's both of those things. But buildings like this are going to happen. And in a way, this is the best way of doing them. It's a radically new form, a, a brilliant addition, in my opinion, to London skyline, this faceted structure which dematerializes and, and looks completely different from different light conditions and different directions, and, and provides a, a completely new perspective on London that's never been seen before.